Hello everyone, welcome to another repair video. Today we're going to be working on this PlayStation 4 Slim which has been sent in. And this particular console has been sent in because it has a white light of death. And if we take a look at the ticket here, it says that it's been sent in for a PS4 Slim HDMI port replacement. And then Console Repair London, the company who sends me batches of consoles, has determined that this isn't the HDMI port and that it's a board issue. And if we take a look up here, it says WLOD. IC and then question mark so he's put white light of death is it the IC so if you don't know what a white light of death is basically what it does is the console will turn on it will go to a white light on the power button and nothing will come up on the screen and that can be caused by quite a few things the most common cause of it is the HDMI encoder IC the part number for that is the MN864729 and it's a Panasonic HDMI encoder OC for the PS4 1200 series onwards up until the PS4 Pro. So that's the most common cause and what usually happens is either you'll get a power surge down the HDMI cable from the TV, you'll get a overheating issue which will cause it to burn out the chip because the chip gets too hot or you will get the user constantly plugging and unplugging the HDMI cable and what tends to happen is because the HDMI port is on the back of the console the user will tend to try and plug it in blindly like this and they'll you know they'll sit there messing around trying to get it to plug in and they'll end up shorting the pins out because they've plugged it in incorrectly they'll but or in this case they'll basically plug it in on an angle and one of the pins on the port will touch a place where it's not meant to for example ground will touch the data lines so that's what happens and those are the main causes of a white light of death when the IC is to blame the other thing that it could be is the EMI filters so the EMI filter stands for electromagnetic interference and they just filter out noise on the data lines so we've got eight data lines on the HDMI port and the filters are designed to filter out noise and allow for a smoother picture so the filters could go bad they could either short across from one to the other or they can short to ground if that was the case then the chip is probably bad as well or that can just blow completely so they're basically like a fuse and sometimes they can burn out it's just a coil of wire inside sometimes they can burn out because they've got too hot and that will cause the data to not be able to pass from the chip to the port that's another cause uh, another cause that it could be is the HDMI protection fuse so on the HDMI circuit there's a resettable fuse and that fuse can sometimes burn out and end up with an open circuit and then we can't allow power to pass from the chip to the port itself so those are the three most common causes until we actually get inside we're not going to know but I'm going to test this and see what happens so I'm going to plug it in I'll plug in a HDMI cable into the capture card and then we'll see what happens with it. So let's turn it on then. And we get a blue light. Sounds like there's a disc in the drive. So let's switch over to the HDMI capture card then. And we get no signal. And we're just waiting for this light to go white, just to confirm. And there you go, so the light has gone white, I'll just show you that on the camera. So as you can see we've got a white light there, and when we load up the capture card, there's nothing at all showing on the screen, it's just coming up no signal. So what that means is that we've got no display. One thing I am noticing is that someone appears to enjoy putting the cigarettes on here, and it's melted the case. That's obviously not something that we're going to be dealing with, that's down to the customer, uh, but that's one thing to note that this console isn't very well taken care of so what we're going to do is we're going to turn it off first of all we're not going to unplug the HDMI cable while the power is plugged in just in case the chip is fine and it's something else then we're going to unplug the HDMI cable and we're going to take it apart we're going to see if we can figure out what's going on and hopefully we can get it working again so I'm going to try a little magic trick here and if you like it then you've got to subscribe to the channel if you don't like it then you know you can subscribe anyway so let's try a magic trick all oh, right that was awesome don't forget to like and subscribe ladies and gentlemen you're not going to see this anywhere else magic all right 
now that we're inside the console, what I want to do is run a couple of diagnostics on the motherboard and just see if we can figure out what's going on. Hopefully, it's nothing too serious. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give all of these pins a quick nudge test. Let's just get that in focus there. There we go. And what I want to do is just check each of these pins and just make sure that they're correctly soldered. I'm assuming that this, because this is a aftermarket port, I'm assuming that it's Console Repair London who's put this port on. And he has a very good success rate when it comes to HDMI ports because, oh, hang on. Uh, that's just a ground, that's not going to hurt it. That is something to take note of though. Uh, but that is just a ground, so that's not going to stop it from displaying. But he usually has a 100% success rate. That one's a little bit loose. But, but I think it's probably got the connection there. We can double check that with the multimeter. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to double check and make sure that we've got a connection from the pin itself to the EMI filter where it's meant to go to. So if we follow the track down, we can see that it's meant to go here to this left hand filter here. So these are the EMI filters and you can see that we've got four solder points here and the top and the bottom is one filter. So that's one filter, that's one filter, one filter, one filter and so on and there are eight in total and they go to the data lines on the HDMI port. In between those there are ground points so if we take a look here they're on alternating pins so we've got basically pin one is here and we've got data ground data data ground data data ground data data ground data and then we've got the rest of the lines for power hot plug detect and things like that so that's basically the circuit and the most common problems usually arise from either the hdmi port itself or this panasonic mn864729 there's a there's a general misconception that these chips are really bad and that they're really weak and they fail often, but they're not. And most of the time I've found it's down to user mistakes when these chips do actually go bad. They don't very often just die on their own for no reason. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll do some tests on the pin here, so pin 1 for continuity uh, to the filter. And then I'm going to test the filters themselves. And then I'm going to test a few of these diodes and things around here. So, like this diode here, there's some on the back. Uh, we can test this chip here by testing some of the capacitors. But other than that, they don't generally show up as bad. So we can also test some stuff here on the back. There's a few things here that we can check, such as these diodes just here, this one here, this fuse here. So this is the resettable fuse I was talking about. And if all of that checks out good, then we'll just replace the chip anyway, because it, chances are it's going to breathe that chip. Because this port has already been changed, I'm going to say it was probably damaged. So it's probably going to be the chip, but we've got to do them tests anyway, because the fuse and the diodes and the filters are a lot cheaper to replace than the chip itself. So let's do some end-to-end -to -end tests to make sure that we've got continuity on the line. And then what we'll do is we'll just replace whatever whatever components we find or what we feel are bad. So I've got the multimeter on the screen as you can see here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my multimeter into diode mode there. So you can see we've got a little diode icon on the screen where the multimeter is. And I'm going to test these pins one by one for continuity. And like I said, I'm going to start by testing pin number one for continuity to the filter itself. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. It's going to be a little bit difficult because I've broken my test probe here. So it's going to be a little bit tricky to get correct readings, but I will do my best. I'm not going to test it from the bottom of the pin because we might accidentally touch the pad and then that would have continuity. I'm going to try and test it from the top of the pin without putting pressure on the pin. And we get 0 0.000, which is correct. That means we've got a dead short from the from the one probe to the other, which means that this pin has continuity to the filter. So that's absolutely fine. So let's test the filters themselves from top to bottom. And we get 0 0.000. 
0 0.00 and from side to side we get 0.869 which is perfect that's absolutely perfect so that filter is good so I'm going to continue to test these then perfect Perfect. And the final one. And whoops, a little bit of a scratch there. So I'm waiting for some new test probes to come. And it's rather difficult to work at the minute, but I've still got to work, unfortunately. Absolutely perfect. So all of those are checking out fine, but I do want to make sure that we haven't got a short to ground on the filters themselves. So I'm going to pop one probe on ground here, and in this case I'm going to use the top of the HDMI port, which if I, connect, if I touch another ground, we'll see we've got 0, 0.000, which is fine. And I'm just going to check these filters. And we get open line. And this is what we should be getting. We should be getting an open line. We shouldn't get a continuous path or any kind of a path, even if it's got high resistance uh, to ground from these filters. If we do, then we've definitely got an issue with the chip because the port appears absolutely fine. And that is absolutely fine. So all of those are checking out perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is test this diode just here. And this side should be ground, and it is. And we get open line that way. So the other way, we should get a reading of around about 0.5 when we flip the leads around. 0.573, so that's absolutely perfect. So that's a good reading. So let's flip the board around then. And I'm going to test some components on this side of the board. Now you can do this in continuity mode, which is the beat mode. But I'm doing it in this mode so as you guys can see it on the screen as I'm going along. So you could hear it, but if I give you diode readings, then you're going to know what to expect. So let's test this fuse. This fuse does commonly go, a lot more common than people believe. But we do get 0.000, which, which means that we've got a continuous path from here to here, which means the fuse is working fine. So let's check this diode then. I'm going to try and zoom in a little bit because you, it is a little bit out of focus. Let's just try and get that, there we go, a little bit better focus. And we get 0 0.539 that way, which is perfect. And we get open line that way, which is again, perfect. 0 0.583, perfect. 0 0.581. Okay, so let's flip the, flip the leads around and we should get open line. And we do. And how about this one? This is rather tricky because of the multimeter probe situation. But I'll, work, I'll manage it until the new test leads come later on. Okay, so absolutely perfect. So that's fine. So the only thing realistically that it can be is going to be the chip itself. So the Panasonic HDMI encoder. So what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to bother testing this because even if it doesn't show up as bad, chances are it's bad. And most of the time it doesn't generally show up anything. So I think it's a waste of about five minutes. All I'd be doing is just checking for continuity to ground on the capacitors. Uh, so this one and this one, it's kind of pointless because everything else is testing out absolutely fine so realistically the only thing it can be is going to be the chip itself so I'm just going to get that chip removed and replace it with a brand new chip these chips cost around about £6 off Aliexpress they're not too expensive they are a bit of a nightmare to replace on the PS4 1200 series and the slims 
The toes are not so bad, it's the size of the pads and the pitch between the pads that causes it to make it difficult to actually change. But it's not too bad, it's certainly not the worst chip I've had to change in my life. So for removal I've got my hot air set to 480 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of 30% and that chip's removed. So what I'm going to do before I install a new chip is just replace the solder that's on here at the moment and put some fresh leaded solder down. So I'll just add a bit of flux there just to help to meet in these pads. And then I'm going to take some leaded solder and let's tin the ground pad. So tinning the ground pad is one going to lower melting temperatures and it's also going to allow us to align this chip a lot easier than it would with lead free solder on there. And the excess solder will just squeeze out so that's not too much of a big deal how much we put on. The excess solder will squeeze out and it basically just helps us to align it but it acts as a heat sink so we do want solder there because it does act as a heat sink for the board or for the chip. It allows for heat to transfer from the chip to the ground plane on the board so it's always wise to put solder there no matter what. So here's a brand new chip as you can see. So this is brand new out of the packet. So let's zoom out a little bit. Um, for reinstallation, I'm going to set my hot air to 440 degrees Celsius at 30% airflow. And I'm just going to solder this chip down using hot air. Now I'm just going to give it a little bit of assistance because it's just not quite putting itself into place. Okay, that appears to be in line. So I'm going to let that settle for a minute and then I'm going to use the side of the tweezers and I'm going to press down evenly on the chip and then I'm going to reflow it once more and what this is going to do is it's going to push all of the excess solder out the sides of the chip. So you can see the excess solder squeezing out there, don't worry about that, that's absolutely normal. All that's going to do is just make sure that the chip is flat to the board and that it's going to solder correctly when we run the soldering iron across it. I'm going to add some more flux and then I'm going to take my soldering iron and just run it across all four edges. So the good thing about these chips compared to the PS4 1200 series is that there's not really a lot of things in the way, whereas on the PS4 1200 series we do get quite a few things which prevent us from installing the chip easily, such as the PlayStation camera port, that's in the way usually on the 1200. Okay, let's give that a clean up and then I'll take a look and see what's going on with it. Just see if we've successfully soldered all the pads or not. I'm going to use isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush and just give it a good scrub. Okay, and then I'm going to dry it off using some hot air or rather warm air, it's not hot. And then I'm going to finish the clean up with a cotton swab and a bit of isopropyl alcohol just to get that little bit of excess flux from around the edge of the chip. Let's dry it off. Excellent. Alright, 
So what I want to do then is just take a look on an angle and just see if all of the pads are soldered. There's probably going to be a couple what need touching up by the look of it. As you can see, some are darker than the others, and the lighter ones haven't got nearly as much solder on them as the other ones. So we'll take a look. If they're making a connection, then we'll leave it, but if not, then we'll touch them up and get a better joint on them. It appears that the pads are soldered. They've just not got as much solder on them. So we could sit there and touch them up, but I don't think that's necessary. They don't have to all be perfect in order to get the connection and we can see that there is indeed solder on them the solder's just not going all the way back to the bottom of the pad but there is indeed solder there and probably more than enough to make a connection as well but if we do get an issue with it then we would just touch those pads up but I don't think we're going to have an issue see those ones are all perfect Some of them can be a little bit stubborn depending on the amount of heat that needs to be transferred. And yeah, I think there's enough solder on all of them. It does look as though there's enough solder on the pads, it's just not, they're just not going all the way back. It should be fine. So let's get it tested. Alright, so I'm not going to replace the thermal paste yet. And the reason for that is because if I have to take it back apart, then I've got to replace it again and what I'll do is I'll just basically put it back together enough for testing just to make sure that it works and if it works then I'll take everything apart take the metal chassis and things like that off clean everything out and then put it back together but if it doesn't work then I haven't lost any more money by and, and I know it sounds stupid but by putting thermal paste on because if I put thermal paste on and then I have to take the board back out then I've got to replace the thermal paste again because the thermal paste will be in the wrong place. Uh, so basically that's why I don't bother replacing the thermal paste until after I've tested it and made sure that it turns on and that it displays. If it turns on and displays properly then I'll turn it straight off. I'll put everything back together properly, clean it all out, test it fully and then basically uh, we'll be good to go then. So what I'm going to do is just install essentials. So that's going to be the heatsink and the hard drive and the power supply that's pretty much all i need to install for testing just to see if it displays on screen and if everything checks out like i said i'll turn it straight back off and i'll clean everything 30 seconds being turned on with the old thermal paste is not going to cause any harm and it's actually not old thermal paste it looks like console repair london has replaced the thermal paste on it so it is fresh thermal paste, but now it's going to be in the wrong place. So I'll need to clean it all off and put fresh thermal paste on. So that's going to be the plan. And I'm going to secure the hard drive in just in case. And I haven't put that metal clip there in yet either. So either way it's got to come back apart. But like I said, I've got to take the frame apart to be able to clean the heatsink anyway. So I'm not worried too much about the thermal paste and things yet okay so and I'm going to plug the fan in just to help it with the cooling just to make sure and we'll get the power supply and let's turn it on so I'm going to make sure that there's going to be nothing that's going to short out the motherboard and then of course we're going to use exactly the same HDMI cable and then it's time for testing so the console still turns on which is great So let's switch over to the capture card.
Okay, and this is not even going to a white light now. That's kind of worrying. I'll be honest, that's kind of worrying. Right, okay. That's kind of worrying, I'll be honest. This transistor here is getting quite hot. And these chips are brand new. They are literally brand new. So, that's quite worrying that the console is getting hot. Or rather, that transistor is getting hot. So, let's take it back apart. Let's see what else is going on. So, I'm just going to pop the multimeter into continuity mode quickly and just check the caps on the HDMI encoder. So, one probe on ground. Okay, and for some reason we have a shorted diode. Let me pop back under the scope. I'm pretty sure that this diode here is coming up short. And it is. Right, this isn't normal. This is not normal. Okay. I'm going to take this chip back off. I'm wondering if that's just blown my chip. I won't be happy if it has. Let's put it that way. I'll be very annoyed if it has. Actually, let's not. Let's try and take off this diode here. This diode was reading fine. Diode was reading fine. diode is fine oh dear well these are brand new chips like I say Wait, could that have been shorted by bridging it? Hmm. I'm wondering if there was a bridge on the chip. I didn't see a bridge on that chip. So I've resoldered that, or at least I've resoldered it enough to see if that short comes back. I'm going to double check and make 100% sure that there's no problem with the soldering, or rather that there's no bridges around there. Okay, so there's no bridges at all on that area whatsoever. So. 
let me just double check with the connection to ground. I'm a short back. Okay. Well. Oh dear. Well, it's either something's blown the chip or it's a bad batch. Or it's a bad chip. But it's brand new. Okay, let's try installing another chip. This one's brand new. Alright, so there's definitely no bridges. 100% there's no bridges this time. And again, it's shorting out. Um, once again that's shorting out and it makes no sense at all so as soon as the chip is installed it's basically shorting out um, yeah I don't understand it it shouldn't be shorting out at all that that pad is not connected to ground let's test it anyway but that shouldn't be shorting out Okay, and yeah, that transistor is getting red hot again. A few inches later. Right, okay, so I've been messing around for the past half an hour or so, and the bad news is these chips are defective. All of them. Literally all of them. I bought five of them from one seller. Uh, it was a new seller on AliExpress, and yeah, they're all bad. Every one of them. And I'll show you why. I'll show you how I know. So the first thing that I thought was it was my soldering skills and I've been sitting there doubting myself um, because the entire reel wasn't working uh, I bought five of them and I've tried all five of them literally and I'm going to show you something so let's zoom out a little bit here and we can see the chip so this chip that's on here right now is the customer's chip so this belongs to the customer, this is the old chip. I was going to put it back on and I was going to determine it as no fix. So what I did was I put the chip back on and I put one probe on ground and I tested this diode or what rather where the diode meant to be. No short. Short there. No short there. So what does that mean? Well it means that there's no short. Now that particular trace where that diode is, if we follow that if we follow that diode down, so let me just clean it up a little bit, just so as you can see it better. So I'm going to clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol, and I'm going to show you how I've determined that these chips are bad, and I've already opened a dispute on AliExpress for these, and this has really, really annoyed me. So let me show you how I know that these particular chips are bad and I'm also going to show you how I tested these particular chips, brand new chips that have never been installed on the board so like this one that's just off to the side here. So I'll just dry this off and then you'll be able to see the actual trace itself. So if we follow this trace down. from here so this is where the diode is and this side is not meant to be ground 
and as you heard it was short into ground when I had one of my chips installed so if we follow this down it goes to this test point here from this test point here it goes to let me just make sure I get it right just there so this pin here if we count from the bottom from the top here we've got one two three four five six seven eight so sorry nine so pin number nine so if we follow pin number nine we can see that we don't have a short on this chip but if we come along to this chip so we've got the chip here uh, let me just make sure I get this correct so that's the correct orientation so pin number nine this is the correct orientation let's just zoom out so if we flip this around pin number nine on the right hand side is going to be pin number nine on the left hand side and you can see that this chip is brand spanking new so pin number nine on the left hand side because the chip is flipped around so ground is going to be the middle pad one two actually let's just zoom in a little bit so we can see We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is shorted to ground. Same with pin number eight. And pin number nine, I'm not sure about pin number eight, but pin number nine is not meant to be shorted to ground. And in fact, it is not meant to be shorted to ground. Pin number eight and nine is not meant to be shorted. And they are so those pins are not shorted so what does that tell me well it tells me number one that my soldering skills were not causing a short on that chip and number two it was it's telling me that these chips are all defective they are all defective and I went on to Aliexpress and I'm actually going to pull up the listing now so we can see here that I ordered five of these chips for £34.22. You can see I've got a dispute in progress. And there we go. So QFN88 chipset. If we click on this link, £5.71 each. That's not including tax. And let's go down to the reviews. So, a French user, the IC is shorted to the ground. It does not work. The seller does not answer to my messages. 5th of February 2021. I ordered these on the 1st of February. So I wasn't to know. So obviously that poses a problem because every single chip that I have in stock, brand new, is now no good. So that is very annoying. Um, yeah, so obviously I've opened a dispute. The seller's name is Phone TPU Store, so do not buy from Phone TPU Store. They are selling defective products. Now, if I was to buy, for example, five and one of them was defective, then fine. I'm not bothered. I can buy these chips for about twelve pound on eBay. Uh, so. You know, around about half the price. I wouldn't be bothered if I had, if I if I had one defective chip, even two, even two. If you had, say, for example, a reel of chips and two of the chips in that reel was defective, then fine. That's that's normal. You're going to get for defective chips. You don't get five defective chips in a row. You don't get five defective chips in a row. Or at least I have never had five defective chips in a row. So, what that's telling me is that these are probably factory rejects, and the seller is selling factory rejects which have been determined as bad and that they are de they're destined for e-waste so the only thing that I can do now is to pull a chip off a donor board and get this job finished but at the same time I'm still down with five chips right now and there's nothing at all that I can do about it until I get my money back
Now, if AliExpress refuse the dispute, I'm going to show them this video. Um, I really am praying that they accept my dispute. Um, because right now I'm at £35. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot of money, but that is, you know, to a small business, even a small loss can be, um, you know, can have a hard hit on on the uh, the business and I have I, I do run a small business I don't run a massive business where you know I'm turning over thousands and thousands a month so it's uh, yeah it's really annoyed me it really has but this is a customer chip so I'm going to take this chip back off and I'm going to hope hope now that this hasn't caused any damage to the motherboard itself because if it has then I've got to pay for it if my chips have caused damage to the motherboard itself, I am I'm in for a motherboard. I've got to pay for a motherboard. That's the way it has to be because I've installed that chip. Uh, now, the blame doesn't fall with me directly, but because I've got this board in my care, I am responsible for this board. So even though I wasn't to know that these chips were defective, I'd still be responsible for it. So now I've got to pull a chip off a donor board and hope and pray that there's nothing wrong with the board itself now because when I tried to install that chip it had a blue light of death so yeah it's it's very annoying it is very very annoying alright so I've actually got a tub with about 15 chips inside uh, I don't know which ones are good and which ones are not so I'm basically going to have to sit here now and just install every chip until I figure out which one works and which one's actually going to be good enough to use uh, now that's just the way it's got to be for me to be able to get this job done and uh, I'm not going to let a, a dodgy seller beat me but right now I don't have any chips in stock so basically what I do sometimes I've had boards which I couldn't fix or which have had other faults and I've took the chip off and I've just took them into a box but I don't know whether it's the chip what's defective or whether it's the board itself what's defective so I don't know what chips and what I don't know what chips are going to be any good so I've basically just got to hope and pray now that I get it now I've got a good chip in stock what I can actually use so I'll probably skip through this process now and and resume the video when I actually get a chip installed and uh, and working Alright, so chip installed, let's test for a short to ground on that diode. No short to ground on that diode. Okay. And yes, we have a display. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, the relief. That's absolutely brilliant. I do need to put a diode back. It does work without the diode, but I need to put a diode back. Let's hope it works in 1080p. I cannot believe five chips in a row are defective. It's absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I am not happy at all. But thank goodness we've got a display. And looks like we're working. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, I like them icons, that's cool. Video output, resolution, 1080p. Let's switch to 480, make sure it handles that. Oh, the relief. The absolute relief. Really. 
Oh, right, this one's working. That's working absolutely fine. Yeah, that's brilliant. Awesome. Right, let me test the disc and uh, and then I can call this done. Um, I still need to do a bit to it. I need to replace that diode. Um, I'm not going to do that on video. Um, so I need to replace that diode and I also need to clean the entire system out and give the board a good clean. It's had an awful lot of flux around, so uh, that's something I've got to do. But let's just grab a test game here. Let's go for FIFA 16. Oh, it's got a disc in it. Never mind. I forgot. It's got a disc in it. Oh, no, it hasn't. I thought it had a disc in it. Okay, that's weird. Oh, I haven't got the disc, in disc drive installed. All right, never mind. Yeah, forget that. <laughs> uh, I haven't got the disc drive on turned on all right fine yeah okay uh I'm, this video is going on a bit now it's going a little bit long um probably about an hour and a half of footage uh to edit through so <clears throat> what i'm going to do um i'm happy with this if it needs anything else then i'll carry on with the video and do some editing wizard wizardry uh but it appears as though this is done um yeah I've got no words, honestly. I've got no words for this one. Five defective chips, uh, all on the same reel, all brand new. Um, so, when they come from the factory, they come in those reels. Um, I don't know where I've put that particular reel now, but um, they, come on the, they come on these reels, and uh, basically they're called tape and reel, uh, where basically they the chips, are in, the chips are situated inside a reel, uh, inside a tape reel, um, and then they're stuck down with um, a piece of plastic um, and that usually indicates that they're brand new uh, but yeah I've just got no words for them honestly I really haven't got any words um, I've got bunches of chips here so I've got like loads of um, loads of these encoders loads of the uh, PS4 original encoders probably 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 uh, I don't know probably five six hundred pounds worth of chips there um, all come off either donor boards or boards that I couldn't get working. Uh, most of them chips probably do work, but you know it's still annoying the fact that I bought five chips and now I've got to sit there and wait for a refund and I've had to order more from a different seller. Um, because I don't like to use donor chips. I only use those in an emergency if if I've got no chips available. Um, you know I can't anticipate delivery times when it comes from China, and sometimes I do run out, but. Yeah, I've just got no words to explain what just happened with the, all of those chips. It's it's not normal. But uh, needless to say, this console appears to be working absolutely fine. Um, I'm going to leave it there for the video. I do have to replace that diode and I also have to clean the board, clean the rest of the system out and put it all back together. But, you know, that's, uh, that's probably another 20 minutes work. But the video is going on a little bit now. So let's just summarise then, this console was sent in for no display and after a lot of fumbling and faffing around I've managed to get the display working by replacing the HDMI encoder with a working chip. Um, but that's going to be it for this video, thank you very much for watching, let me know what you think down in the comments down below. If you do want to see more repair videos be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified every time that I upload. If you do feel sorry for me and you want to support the channel, you can do that for as little as £1.99 per month. Just click on the join button below the video. But that's going to be it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, see you later. Bye for now.